Hi folks, welcome to Boating on a Budget. I'm the tight Yorkshireman. And I'm Dawn. Hold on, we've got that one wrong for a start, haven't we? <laughs> I think that about sums up our week yeah, so far, does. doesn't it? Yep. And really, that's kind of why we're set up like this, isn't it? Because although we've been doing a few jobs, we've not really had a chance to sort of film our proper no. beginnings and ends and all that. Not that we ever really do beginnings and ends and proper filming. Do we, the way it's we called do winging it for a reason, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we definitely are called winging it for a reason. <laughs> but yeah, so what we've actually done is we've got the footage uploaded onto the laptop of the bits we have done and made a few notes of what we've been doing and we're now going to kind of go through the laptop and sort of catch people up as we actually see yeah. what we've been doing yeah. and what have you. So, one of the things we're going to discuss on today's episode is our little competition, isn't it? We're going to be giving away the Speed Square, the key ring, a t-shirt, maybe a few other bits. Yeah. But we'll discuss that later, won't we? That'll make sure everyone watches right to the end. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or they'll just skip, now skip to right end. to the end. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll come to the competition in a little while. What we've been up to then? Been doing us normal stuff. Ah, a bit of normal stuff. I mean, what what do we normally do? Cooking. Yeah, Dawn cleaning. always does a bit of cooking and a bit of cleaning and all that malarkey. I did a bit of washing as well, didn't I? You always do clothes washing. Clothes washing, yeah. Yeah, because obviously, although we have <coughs> been doing some stuff on the boats, which obviously we'll, uh, we'll come to shortly. Nights are draining, aren't they? You know, we're, we're kind of headlong right into the middle of winter. Yeah. And in fact, we're only about a month away now from the shortest day. So then they start getting longer. But it means kind of by the time you've done at work and things, you come home and, yeah. you know, it's dark. Go to work in dark, come home come in dark. Come home in dark. And then as days off, we manage to get a few bits done. But it certainly limits what we can actually do, yeah, of doesn't course, it? Yeah. First thing I think we need to discuss then is the big question. Is Leander Lady for sale? Mm. Mm. The basic answer is no, <laughs> but I suppose yes, but no really. Just as a brief thing, basically what happened was, about a week or so ago, somebody put a boat up for sale on one of the Facebook forums, and seeing as obviously I only work part time, I spend half my life on them. I mean, I'm always busy doing stuff, but yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, they, they put a post on um, advertising what was basically an oldish boat like this one was when we bought it. And to be honest, they seem to want quite a lot of money for it. And I know boat prices have gone up and because of Covid and things, people have been buying boats because they've not been able to go abroad. And ultimately what somebody sells their boat for is their own choice. Yeah, of course. But I did comment on it saying, I think that boat's a little bit on the expensive side. Um, because we bought this one a lot cheaper and even with the work that we've done, if we were to sell it, we'd take probably only a couple of grand more than what they were advertising their boat at. Yeah. I think their boat was advertised at 18 grand. And I said, if we were to sell this now, we'd sort of take 20 grand for it. And from there, we did have a few people who kind of went... Chucking 20 grand at us. <laughs> Nobody actually <laughs> chucked the 20 grand at us. But no, a few people did kind of then comment saying, oh, what's the boat? Can you send us the details of the boat? And we were like, hmm. And then I thought, well, if we did sell it, I could buy a Dutch barge. Oh, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> but there is also the issue of we've got nuts and vaults, which is really the boat that in the not too distant future we are going to be gonna selling. We are going to for sale, yeah. But yeah, so in essence, no, really. Because then we did equally have a few people sort of contact us and sort of say, well, oh, are you selling your boat and what have you? Like, no, it was just a bit of an off the cuff <laughs> like comment. <laughs> and just on that as well, I would say, you know, some people are like, oh, well, you shouldn't be a keyboard warrior telling people things. And at the end of the day, I'd... is it being a keyboard warrior or is it offering advice? You know, if somebody to, were to walk down the marina now and say, oh, we're putting our boat up for sale and we're selling it for X amount. And I said, mm, to be honest, I think it's probably a bit expensive. You'd class that as advice. But because it's on the computer, you're people kind of go, oh, yeah. you're being a keyboard warrior. But anyway, we digress. So ultimately... Leander Lady's not really for sale, unless you've got 20 grand and you're desperate to buy her. <laughs> <laughs> you will notice as well, it's the evening. So we haven't got a brew. No. We've got a beer. And I must say, this beer of mine came from Paul. Paul and Nicky on the boat next door. 
he's into his beers a bit like I am and he, he got me this one a month or two back actually now isn't it and I've been saving it and it, it comes to something when you're having to drink Ron Seal. <laughs> Take Ron a Seal serious. does exactly what it says on the tin. So does that mean I'm going to either be really shiny or really drunk? Because which way does it mean it does exactly what it says on the tin? But as a, as a little beer review, I would say this is the medium oak best bitter. And it's not bad. It's not the best beer I've ever had. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm tasting. Oh, Dawn's now chief taster. Very hoppy. No, I don't know. Very I hoppy. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Says the lager drinker. It's very hoppy. And... No, no, it's, it's all right. But thank you very much, Paul. Much appreciated. Not a bad time. <sighs> On with the work then that we've been doing. Because we need to get away from keyboard warrior stuff and beer and things. Yeah. What we got behind us? Oh, my wall. Your wall. Obviously, on the last episode, if you saw that, which I'm sure you did, because everybody watches every episode, don't they? I kind of revealed half of this wall, didn't I, and finished mm. part of it off. But at the time, that side of it wasn't done. And you weren't here, and you're the one that's been doing it. Yeah. So, you can now tell the ladies and gentlemen exactly what you did whilst I have a beer. Oh, we use loads of offcuts from the wood that we've used around the boat and then very randomly stuck them on a wall but it was the most unrandom random non-thought about most thought about project i've done so far yeah because <laughs> i was going to let you explain did that it, sound right <laughs> but i can't help but jump in but yeah you, you kind of obviously you try and have to do a random pattern but your brain automatically sort of thinks of patterns yeah. don't it yeah, kind of think so i've done a big one and a small one and i need to do a big one again or whatever and you have to kind of step out of that yeah. and then get back and, in and it was extremely time consuming weren't it yeah. i mean there's hours and hours of work gone into that because every bit of wood you had to sand all the oh, edges yeah. make yeah. sure they were all perfectly smooth and flat on the back because otherwise when you stuck them on they wouldn't have stuck properly would yeah. they and and then that side there was especially tricky not only for you to actually do it, but also to film it, because obviously... I'm stuck in corner. Stuck in the corner by the fire. And as we've already said, we're now in the middle of winter, so most of the time when you're in the boat, you being Nesh. Nesh being feels the cold for folk that aren't from your parts. <laughs> meant that you want the fire on all the time when you're in here, but obviously to get into that corner, you couldn't have the fire no. on. No. So it has took... A bit of time and a bit of planning to get a day where the weather was warm enough for you to endure it, <laughs> but not. It's very enjoyable. Yeah, and it is very, very enjoyable. We must, must say we've it. had. Obviously, when I put that side on the last vlog, we had some really nice, positive comments about it. And then what we did is the other day when we finished that bit, I put some pictures on our Patreon page, um, so that the, the patrons got a sneak preview uh, of a picture and. They were all sort of, the, we got loads of fantastic comments. Yeah. The only thing was they said you should do around the corner now as well. <laughs> Creating your Thanks, mall. Thanks guys. <laughs> yeah, they said you should do that, that underneath part there, which uh, we'll perhaps see because we had got a few plans for that, haven't we? we? We've got kind of an idea of putting like a little rack there to put some of the cast iron pans and things yeah, on. Yeah, we don't want to cover it up, do we? No, if there's no point you doing all that and then building something you know, or putting things in front of it. But yeah. So that's potentially a... We'll see. Yeah. Also, here on the moorings, we've had a bit of a switch round the boats, haven't we? Because we've got kind of Leah was on a temporary mooring that he's now moved on to a permanent one. Mm -hmm. And the permanent one that he's moved on to is the one where Nuts and Volts was. Yep. Which has created a space as the boats have moved around for us to put Nuts and Volts now next, next to Leah and the lady. Yeah. Which, it was only about three boats away. But how many miles did we walk backwards and forwards from one boat to the other? So we are clearly getting extremely lazy in our old age that we wanted to move a boat like three lengths further down. But it has made it much better, hasn't it? We've put them both together and, you know, the, the kind of... But at least for safety reasons. We yeah, can I mean, we, on yeah we, can, we can sort of see them both together and, and the, they're here together. And if there's issues like sort of bad weather, floods or anything like that, we, we have got both boats right next to each other. We can yeah, sort of, of monitor course. them at the, at the same time. But seeing as we moved it down here, 
I thought I'd give her a wash. The question that gets asked on some of the narrowboat forums quite often is, should you put this artificial grass on the roof of your boat? Some people say it looks nice, some people aren't so keen. But the main question about it is, is it actually causing any damage? Is it holding water against your paint and damaging your paint? Or likewise, ultimately, is it holding water there and creating rust that would eventually be a problem? We're about to find out because I had to put this artificial grass on here during the original lockdown. So that was March, April time, 2020. And we're now kind of November, 2021. So that's been on well over 18 months. And it's just sat there with various things on top of it. So let's peel it back and have a look what it's like underneath. Well, initial reaction is, that's not looking too bad to me at all. There's a bit of muck and a bit of grubbiness around there. But I reckon, with a wash down, that is going to be absolutely fine. Let's get the bucket and sponge out. Now let's take a closer look at this roof then and I'll let you draw your own conclusions as to whether there's any issues with putting artificial grass on the roof of an arrowboat then because as we look along there I can't see any signs of any rust or any kind of permanent staining or marking that's occurred due to the grass being on there I think one thing you do have to bear in mind with artificial grass is it's made up of a mesh so it doesn't actually hold the water, it lets the water run through it. The only sign we have got of a little bit of rust is on this bracket I made up that holds the solar panel in place. And that's clearly my fault. I've obviously not got enough paint or rust inhibitor into that joint. In the description below, I will add the link to the paint that we used when we painted this boat. Because to be honest, it wasn't the expensive paints and we've been more than happy with it on that boat hence why we then painted that boat with it as well so yeah that's nuts and bolts looking all nice and clean and shiny now nice just like she was when we first painted her all them many many months ago seems like forever though yeah it well. does it, it does genuinely seem like forever <laughs> i mean as i said that was the sort of start of lockdown really yeah, when we course. started working on that the original lockdown march 2020 so we're only kind of 18 months down the line but what's happened in that 18 I know, months i know it's crackers <laughs> it has gone absolutely mad and i did say i think on the last time we did a live video that i would actually do a specific video about nuts and bolts and what's happening with it and what oh, have you of course um, of course I've not really quite got a chance to actually do that video as yet, but I will do one. The, the long and short of it at the minute, though, is really, since the last specific video about nuts and bolts, which is kind of a year ago, we haven't really done anything with her, have we? She's kind of a glorified spare bedroom at the minute, isn't right, she? Right, Joel. Yeah, yeah, and she just kind of sits there. And there's... There's talk, I'll not discuss too much because we've not confirmed anything, but there is talk with uh, with somebody we've got to know through doing these videos, a chap who's building his own boat up, um, might be coming up with a system to get her going again. Mm. So we might yet see the poor man's electric boat move, on the move again. And, <laughs> and not just being towed like it was when we brought it down here. But we'll see about that. I'll stay off it then. <laughs> Yeah, because it's always you who breaks our boats. We have noticed, we did work out, didn't we, that whenever any of our boats have ever broke down or anything... I'm driving You're it. basically driving it, or you're either just taking over or just finishing driving yeah. it. So. so, Dawn's now barred. She is no longer captain. Now, where did you put my tin hat? Or my suit of armour? Why do you need it? I think I might do. <laughs> Let's talk reviews. Dum, dum, dum. You need it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, as I'm sure many people are aware, a couple of months ago, we did a review on the Jackery 
uh, power pack system. Yeah. Um, we did it and a fair few other narrowboat channels and camper van channels and off grid channels did it. And to be honest, a fair few of us got a fair bit of stick for doing it. Of course. Um, a lot of people were saying, not a lot of people, some people were saying we shouldn't be doing reviews, it's not what we're on narrowboats for. And it all got a bit out of hand. I mean, to be honest, at least one channel we know of, they're even possibly thinking of not bothering making videos anymore because of the flack they got from it. It has been awful. Yeah, and at the end of the day, what we're basically discussing it now for is, because even having done that and then done a follow-up review to it, we have got probably another couple of reviews on that sort of product to do. Of course. And we're basically doing them because we felt if we've done an initial product review, and then there's other similar products that we can review alongside. Surely it makes sense to review them, to mm -hmm. give people a fair and balanced thing. And what we would say is, these videos aren't, how do you put it, they're not really for the general viewer, are they? People who want to watch our narrowboat rebuild, by all means just skip on by, you know, don't bother watching them. They're not no. there for that. They are really there for people who are in the position of, they've either got a narrowboat, a camper van, they live off-grid or moving off-grid. Do they need one of these products? The videos are aimed specifically, if you like, at them. Obviously, some people like to watch them because they just like to sort yeah. of see what's happening. But what we're saying is, we're going to be doing a few of these reviews. If they're not for you, skip on by. You know, come back, join us on the next video. We all never do them as additional videos as well. We don't kind of do them as, a, oh, this is this week's video, if the you like. The thing is... When we did our review, somebody's bought one. Yes. So obviously, somebody who watches our video has benefited from us doing a review. Yeah, we, we, we know so through... where do you go with that? Then? We know through um, Amazon and YouTube stats that somebody did directly buy one of the products directly from yeah, watching our video. So it's, so it's beneficial it's obviously as well. it has done its job. It's Somebody's seen it, it's given them the right thing. Yep. And I would say, initially, that first video I did, I had... I spent three weeks recording it, recording all the sections, I got three and a half hours of video footage that I edited down to a 40 minute video. So I don't think anybody can say I wasn't comprehensive with it. We no. didn't just kind of get the product and go, oh yeah, go and buy one of these. No. You know, and I pointed out as many as I saw them downsides to the product as I did positives. But basically what we're saying is there will be a few more reviews coming up. By all means, if they're not for you, just skip on back. Skip on they back. will be clearly labelled as a review. So if you see it and it comes up on your screen, you know, review, skip on by, come back to us. Absolutely, later, absolutely. Can I take my tin hat off and my suit of armour off of now? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, are you going to behave yourself? Mm, not sure. <laughs> we have had a massive disaster as well, haven't we? Absolutely catastrophic. Yes. Not really a massive disaster and not really catastrophic, but we have had a leaking window. On my side at bed? Yeah. So it's been catastrophic and it's been an absolute <laughs> disaster. <laughs> True. <laughs> Basically, the, the two front windows that we put in the front of the boat, which were the first two that we refitted, when it's been absolutely throwing it down, I was going to say chucking it down, but... That's right, Yorkshire, isn't it? <laughs> so when it's been absolutely throwing it down with rain, it's been weeping only ever so slightly, hasn't it? But there's been a little bit of a, a weep coming in. And as Dawn says, it were on her side of the bed. So I had to deal with it. Let's have a look at what I did. As we can see there, part of the seals actually come out and we think this is where they're actually leaking from is this kind of seal that holds the actual glass into place. Not the seal that's between the two frames when we open and close it or the seal that's the one that we put on when we sort of tidied these windows up a few months ago. We are fairly certain it is this seal where the glass itself's held in place. So I'm just running some of this clear glazing silicon round. We'll just put a thin bead of that round, rub it in with my finger and that should keep us going now, at least over this winter. And then again, when we come to redo the outside of the boat next year, we can probably uh, take this actual pane of glass out on each one and fit new seals and have it all perfect.
What I don't want to do is put loads of silicon in, otherwise it ends up smearing it all over the window and looks a right mess. Fingers crossed, that should now keep us dry. So we've done cooking, washing clothes, building fireplaces, mending leaking windows, donning suits of armour and tin hats. And now we come back to the big one. Competition. The competition. Basically, again, just to recap from a, from an episode or two ago, uh, William, who, who watches our videos, um, does CNC machinery. So he made the little plaque that's on the wall there, cut that out using a CNC machine, um, and then he's made us these on his um, 3D printer. Probably not be able to pick it up on the camera. I'll see if I can get a close-up. But it's, it's not only is it a speed square and key rings, but they've got our logo in them, yeah, of course. so uh, they're quite good. And we've decided, because he made us a few, because he did a video about it, and I'll put the link to his video uh, below, but seeing as he did us a few, we'll give away one of the speed squares, one of the key rings, definitely one of our t-shirts, one of our, this isn't one of our t-shirts. No. One of our t-shirts with the wing in it logo on, and we might see if we can rummage up a few other items, see what else we've got knocking about, but we'll, we'll confirm them as they come along. Because equally, William from CNC Built Not Bought um, said he might be able to knock us up either another plaque or a yeah. bit of a... Not guaranteed, a, a, a so we can't promise I'll But basically, we? what we're saying is, the competition is for a speed square, a key ring, and one of our, one of our t-shirts. And we asked, had anybody got any good ideas for what competition we could do, rather than, you know, just the old, oh, we'll stick everyone's name yeah. in a hat. And we had a few good suggestions, didn't we? A lot of them involved throwing really sharp, pointy things. One of which, well, one of these. Let me just see if I can grab it. <laughs> these axes. Again, if you remember, me and Dawn made an axe each a few, uh, a few well couple of months back now I suppose at a, a forge and a, a few people said why didn't we put names on a board and throw the axe at it and whoever uh, I'm that not was right not a good idea. Yeah. but equally on a similar theme I think we must have mentioned somewhere that I play darts people who know me playing darts will now be spitting the beer out when he plays <laughs> darts. I mean, he throws things at a wall and sometimes they go in. Sometimes they go in right But no, I play darts. So, we've, and we had a few suggestions along the lines of darts, didn't we? Um, we've come up with a little idea for the competition based around that, haven't we? Yeah. What we're going to do is, we're going to do a live, a live YouTube broadcast. Probably in a couple of weeks, we'll confirm the date. It'll probably be one Sunday afternoon in about a fortnight's time mm -hmm. from now. Um, and you'll have three darts, and I'll have three darts. You'll have your tin out on your arm and <laughs> so Yeah. But we'll throw, each of us will throw our three darts, and we'll see what score we get. Yeah. So obviously what you need to do to win is you need to predict what score we're going to get. Bearing in mind if by some chance all six of our darts, the six we'll throw between us, all completely miss the board or bounce out, we would score zero. If we were both to hit a 180, we'd score 360. So the winning number is going to be somewhere between zero and 360. Yeah. And it genuinely could be anywhere in that score. It because really could. <laughs> Although you have played a little bit of darts in the past, you've probably not picked a dart up for two years. No. Maybe even more than that. It was certainly well before lockdown, yeah, before you last picked a dart up. But in that time when you did occasionally play, you did once hit a 180. Yeah, did you? And in a league game, you came very close to beating a, a couple of blokes a couple of times, yeah. didn't you? So, you, you can kind of chuck a dart, but it's been a while since you've done it, and you never really played regular anyway, did no. you? You more just used to play just to encourage me. <laughs> and likewise... I say I play darts, I play in the league, but 
I think three or four seasons ago in one one particular leg, I hit a score of two. So that meant I had a one, a one, and then a bounce out. out. And then later in that leg, I hit a three. So I had a one, a one, a one. But equally, I once went five darts into the perfect nine, didn't I? Treble 20, sort of four times, uh, yeah, five yeah, yeah. times, and then the six one, didn't So, So I've kind of... Done it's, well, it's and then so, so it could really be random is basically what we're saying but ultimately what you need to do is pick a number between zero and 360 will they make a note of that and obviously we'll only let each person so say if you think you want to choose 140 if somebody's already picked that you'll obviously have to pick again and what we'll do is if we score say random number because I don't want to try and influence people even though I can't anyway if we were to say 169 and nobody's picked 169 we'll go for the next number higher than that yes so if nobody's yeah. actually got the number we got we hit we'll go the next number higher yeah um yeah so basically pick your number between 0 and 360 send it to us on a comment on this video don't send it as a private message don't send it on a Facebook yeah. post, send it on this video. And we can keep and it in one location. Yeah, and we can do it time-wise, because obviously we're not just going to be able to sit here for the next week no. writing them down as they come in. So we can look back and say, if there are two people who select at the, the same number, we can say, well, you, you know, you picked that number first, you've got it. Yeah. I'm waffling on again, aren't I? Mm. I always want let me have a drink, mm. and then we'll... we'll, we'll... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, number between 0 and 360, pop it in a comment, and then we'll confirm the actual date, but I'm thinking it's going to be a, a couple of weeks' time, on a Sunday afternoon, we'll do a live. We also need to work out, anybody who can help us who's a bit techified, we normally just do our lives straight from the laptop, don't we, and we use the little webcam -y thing here, that, that puts us onto there. But really, we're going to need a way of sort of sitting and doing that, because we'll do a question and answer at the same time. <coughs> we need a way of filming that and really can we set up a separate camera as well or can we stream part of it off his phone because we obviously need it all to be at the same yeah, time you need to be throwing the dart and see where yeah. it's hitting at the same time because yeah so is, is there anybody who's techified who can sort of give us obviously a, a simple way of doing it if, yeah. if there is one otherwise we're gonna have to kind of carry the laptop <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> carry the laptop around and we've point, had worse days yeah, and point it in the right direction so yeah I think that summarises that that's the competition that's brought everyone up to date on the work that we've been doing I'm getting a little bit warm because we're sat right in front of the fire and no matter how many of these I drink it's not cooling me down that's a perfect excuse to have another one by the way alright oh, okay oh yeah so obviously we hope everyone has like this video and giving us the thumbs up which incidentally there's no point giving us the thumbs down anymore because youtube's taking away the thumbs down score oh are they yeah so you can still give us a thumbs down but nobody actually sees that you've given us a thumbs down so it's kind of a no 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 to them who <laughs> want to thumbs down people <laughs> now, on a very brief note they're doing it so that we can still see how many thumbs downs we've got but it stops people from just giving a thumbs down on the hope that they'll put other people off watching the video so thank you YouTube. But yeah, so give us the thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. I'm sure everyone's subscribed already to the channel. If they're not subscribed, what do they need to do? Ding the bell. Ding the little bell. A bit like that ding that just went off in the background. Yeah, but I'm guessing that was good timing. That were a text message, not somebody dinging our little bell. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, ding the little bell. That gives you notifications each time we put a post on. And each time we put a post on, that means we've done some work. It certainly does. Right, so we can now move away from the fire, take his tin hat off, take his suit of armour off, and go and practice some darts. See you all later, folks. Bye-bye. <laughs>